Euro allocation funds have been underperforming their benchmarks for years. Here to discuss why is Senior Manager Research Analyst Thomas DeFore. Thanks for joining us, Thomas. So you published a piece called Multi-Asset Investing, a Difficult Sport. Can you explain why it is a difficult sport? Hey, James. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, it, it is a difficult sport. Um, of course, there's multiple ways to look at uh, multi-asset portfolios. The classic way is kind of to compare them to a blended benchmark of stocks and bonds. And if we look at it this way, euro allocation funds have clearly struggled. For example, the uh, the moderate allocation category underperformed uh, by more than two percentage points per year over the last uh, 10 years. And the main reason for this underperformance is, is simple. Um, it can't be stressed enough, but it's fees. So basically, 60% of the underperformance is, is caused by fees. Last year, my colleague Matthias Motola and I have zoomed in on this aspect um, and discussed cheaper alternatives that investors have, like building your own portfolio. But in this report that we discuss, uh, we tackled uh, the other factors that drive returns. So um, multi-asset uh, investors, they have to take a lot of decisions. First, there's the allocation between stocks, bonds, and cash. Then there's the choices within each asset class. You might favor value over growth or up um, or down your duration or credit quality in the bulk sleeve. And uh, thanks for that. And you're saying home bias is also quite a pertinent factor as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, many decisions add up to, to results, of course, and then home bias is a clear example. So we've seen that um, European multi-asset managed managers often um, have more allocation to European stocks, and those have been a detractor versus the benchmark, which holds a higher allocation to US stocks. Um, that is the allocation part. Um, if a strategy uses actively managed underlying strategies, there's an additional layer of security selection within each sleeve that, uh, that fund buyers also have to consider. Sure. You talked about strategic and tactical um, asset allocation decision making. Can you give us an idea of the takeaways from that? Yes. So the, the main driver of returns is what we call strategic asset allocation. So simply put, this is the target allocation between stocks, bonds and other assets. There are some managers that rebalance their portfolio close to those targets. Um, and there's also those that have more leeway, that have more flexibility to adjust allocations as they see fit. Sure. So that's the strategic. What about the tactical side of it? Um, yeah, it's interesting that you mentioned that. Um, what we typically see is that the call for uh, dynamic or tactical portfolio positioning, so that's whereby the manager frequently changes the portfolio's allocation in anticipation of price fluctuations, that call um, typically rings louder after a period of high volatility, like we've seen in 2022. But like many researchers before, we've struggled to detect multi-asset managers that master this art of uh, tactical allocation over long cycles. And, and even in 2023, uh, we didn't see many market timers shine. Sure, yeah, that's not surprising, really. Um, so what would you say is the main takeaway of the report as a final roundup? Yeah, I guess one of the main mot 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 observations and perhaps lessons to investors is it's really important to understand the strategy, the investment process, the promises that are made by managers, and to see if uh, strategic asset allocation and or security selection is the dominant driver of performance or whether tactical trading plays a role. And then finally, uh, perhaps some nuance to the story. Um, there are a great many what we call objectives-oriented funds, for example, multi-asset income that makes distributions or ETF funds that have goals beyond financial returns. So in these, there is a specific investment outcome to consider. And all the work that goes into achieving those um, those goals is not always captured through the benchmark uh, uh, relative performance. Sure. So you would say overall, there's still a role for allocation funds in some investors' portfolios if they choose wisely. Uh, absolutely. Excellent. Well, thanks so much for your time today, Thomas. For Morningstar, I'm James Gard.